One of the biggest reasons I love anime so much isn't because of the fact that it has action-packed adventures that you can only find in your imagination, but more of the deep emotional impact that you can't find anywhere else from like a tragic backstory that some others will see as mediocre to things that some people may not even be able to comprehend as emotions. It's just all of this wrapped into one beautiful animation is what makes this medium so great for me. And one of these shows that I want to talk about that has put an impact on my heart because I understood the awkwardness of the situations and the effort that was put into it is Suki Kagiri, or As the Moon So Beautiful. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Sugi Gakiri follows the story of two shy teenagers, Kotaro Azumi and Akine Mizuno, who are a couple in their last year of junior high. Akine is the star track runner of the school, while Kotaro wants to become an author, and despite being in two completely different worlds, they manage to find each other through their shared introvertedness, if there's anything like that, which in my case I believe there is, because I myself am a huge introvert. Throughout the series, we see how these characters are developed as individuals, in relation to their friends, and with each other, and it's great because we the viewers get a perfect view of what it's like being a teenager again, and that's the first reason why we love this anime so much. No doubt, we've seen other animes showcase the traditional Japanese high school setting that's kind of unrealistic, however, most of them are usually comedic. Take Azumanga Daio, or The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, which still I love and is one of my favorite to this day, but take those for example. Unlike those, Suki Gakiri features one of the most realistic portrayals of what it feels like to be a young adolescent. What you're getting is top quality realistic lessons on literature, culture, and geography, and that's just simply brilliant. We must point out, however, that people watch anime for different reasons. Some people like the crazy imaginative creativity that the art style usually portrays. You know, the Haruhis of this world such as myself. If that's you, then this anime not be for you. However, if you've been looking for a realistic anime that opens you up to a Japanese culture, then you would definitely love Suki Gakiri. And despite loving my crazy out of this world anime, I do tend to love the more realistic stuff even more. It's basically a crash course on what it's like being a teenager and how rough it can be. We've mentioned this briefly earlier, however, let me break it down for you so you can fully understand. Remember I mentioned that they were in their last year of junior high, right? At around the midpoint of the series, just after they return from summer vacation, we see that the kids become focused on getting ready for high school. They even take some night courses or cram schools so that they can get ready. Some of the characters don't have to go through the same work as others, but they explain that that's because of their athletic achievements, and so they don't need to take the test. And this is exactly how it happens in real life. Apart from showing the students studying hard to get into high school, the beginning of the series shows 9th graders spending their first semester finishing all their club activities. It gives a good depiction of the final sports meeting, which are emotionally big deals for 9th graders. Also, the school they attend went on a school trip to Kyoto, which is very common for non-Kyoto junior highs, so their students can learn about the Japanese culture. Finally, the show goes further to portray how kids these days are mostly more comfortable talking to each other via social media apps, which I can relate to honestly. And what's great is that it doesn't take a holistic stance to completely condemn social media, neither does it tie it down as the cause for their shyness. Rather, the show makes its main characters use this as a tool to get out of their shells. Akane and Kotaro communicate using LINE, the most popular social networking app in Japan. They show how mobile communication can help people to come out of their shells and let go of their insecurities. And that's exactly what happened with our two main characters here. And just that part alone, not including the rest that I have to say, hits me because I have a really tough time breaking out of my shell. Most of the time, we see anime that's done in a fictional setting. Now, if that's what you like, then it's no problem, because I like my fair share of it as well. However, if you're more into realism, then you would absolutely love the geography of this series. Suki Gakire features different landmarks in Kawagoe, I think that's how you pronounce it, Tokyo, and Kyoto, that are accurately depicted. If you watch this anime and then travel to Japan afterwards, you would be able to completely navigate through any of the places shown in the series. For example, there's an episode episode in the show where the characters go to La Cua. I don't know how to pronounce that, so it's a shopping mall. Before going on rides at Tokyo Dome City in Bunkyo Ward, 
Do a quick Google search of these places in real life and compare it to this anime's depiction, and you would see that it's completely accurate. Most of the series take place in Kawagoe, and it gives you the real feel of what the Japanese suburban lifestyle is really like. I especially like the fact that it's not set in Tokyo, as a lot of people think the whole of Japan is exactly like Tokyo, which is not true in the slightest. This show shows what the suburban life is like outside of Tokyo. Professionals often say that the sound is 60% of a movie, while its visuals are only 40%, and hidden somewhere in that 60% score is the score of the movie, and this anime nails that. It has a great collection of Japanese songs that were big hits from the 1990s to the early 2000s, and although Although these are Japanese songs, they still sound really great and allow you to further embrace yourself with the culture of the people. The great thing about the score is that they don't just try to put it in Japanese hits to get their Japanese audience. Every single song is played at a point where it fits into the emotion that the creators want to portray. The best thing about Tsukigakire is the love story between Kotono and Akine. It shows how difficult your first love can be. It shows that although love is patient and love is kind, love is not always straightforward. The show gives us a peek into the struggles of young love and the anxiety and heartache that comes with pursuing what you love. It shows the insecurities of the characters as neither of them is truly sure of the other's feelings for them. We also see how they manage the competing affections of other people around them and the uncertainty that lies in their future. But the best thing about it is that despite all of this, under the light of a beautiful moon, Kotaro manages to muster up the courage to ask Akane one simple question that completely changes what was once a very quiet relationship. If you prefer anime with a lot of comedy, then you might just have to skip this one. The main story of this series has next to no comedy. To get a little taste of comedy, you would have to wait until the after credit scenes when other characters show their comedic sides. And yes, we would have liked them to incorporate this somehow into the main theme of the series, because junior high can be very awkward, and that awkwardness can easily be translated into comedy. But apart from that one hiccup, this series is excellent. It has just 12 episodes, so it doesn't stretch itself out further than it needs to. The story is tight, compact, and keeps you engaged from beginning to end. The portrayal of junior high will bring back a lot of memories and nostalgia, and the ending of the movie will leave you in tears because of how beautiful it is. If you want to check it out, I'll try to leave a link in the description down below. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on the bell notification so you get notified whenever I upload a new video if you like your anime analysis. And I also give out a lot of anime recommendations. Also, if you're a fan of ReZero, I did a video on that a while ago describing where Best Girl Rim went in the Season 2 Director's Cut. I'll leave that in the end card, so be sure to click on it if you want to see. I've been Broken Obsessed in My Otaku Ways, and I will see all of you lovely people next time.